What's up, filmmakers and visual effects artists of YouTube? Ryan Constantino with Upper State Entertainment coming at you again today with a tutorial on how to 3D motion track a scene with Buju. It's really important to be able to know how to accurately and correctly motion track a camera, and uh, today I want to show you how. So let's get right into it. Motion track is important for a lot of reasons, but two of the most important is that A, nothing screams amateur more than an object that's shaking around and isn't really locked onto the, uh, the, the plate, the, the raw video that it's been, that's been recorded. And B, it's really important to have the scene coordinates and um, geometry be aligned to the scene correctly where you can pass the project file between After Effects and Cinema 4D and other programs without needing to realign uh, the, the visual effects elements. So let's get started. Okay, so once you have Buju open, the first thing you're going to need to do is import a sequence. Now, you might have heard that you have to use a JPEG sequence in order for it to work correctly, but this is not true. You can use lots of different file types with Buju. I've had success with everything from JPEG sequences to TIFF sequences to even the uh, raw ProRes files uh, loaded directly into the program. Okay, so once you have your image sequence or your video file loaded into the program, you'll need to select a frame rate for the project that you're working with. In this case, it's going to be 24 because that's how I like to work. Once you select your frame rate, you can click apply and then you can see that for whatever reason it looks like it's a little bug or something, it'll jump back to 25. All you have to do is just go back to 24 and click apply again and it'll stay. And the first thing you're going to want to do is add a poly mask to mask out anything that's not part of a stationary object inside of your scene. And what that's doing is telling Buju, hey, don't look at any of the pixels that are contained within these areas because they could move during the course of the shot and uh, provide inaccurate results. All you have to do is click on the add poly masks, create your mask, and you can flip down the masks button here to look at all of your keyframes in that sequence. And then all you have to do is go forward and backward. In this case, it's actually fairly easy because uh, you know, my two actors, they're not really moving at all. So you could probably get away with motion tracking this shot without even doing the masks. But uh, trust me, it's a really good habit to get into because it'll save you some headache in the long run um, with, with, in terms of solving the camera. After you're done creating all of your masks, you're ready to go ahead and track the scene. When you're ready to track, go ahead and click the Track Features button in the toolbox, and it'll bring you a dialog box with a couple of options. Up top here, you can either select to track all of the frames or just a selected range. And of course, you can click the Advanced button to see additional features. The Adaptive Search window allows you to define a minimum search distance and maximum search distance based on a particular grouping of pixels. It looks kind of like this, where you've got the blue box is the distance in which the computer will search for this particular grouping of pixels. So if you have a camera movement that uh, is really shaking, has got a lot going on, what you'll have to do is increase that uh, uh, maximum search distance for uh, how far uh, the, uh, the computer is going to be looking for this particular uh, tracker. And of course, it'll do this adaptive search uh, for all of the points in the entire scene at the same time. The sensitivity allows you to uh, define the amount of points in the scene that are being tracked. Now, simply turning up the sensitivity is not necessarily going to get you a better track. All that means is that the computer is going to pull out more features in the scene and begin tracking them. But uh, just because there's more features doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be better. Uh, what you want is uh, higher quality features. The feature scale, whether choosing normal or large, is, will be uh, mostly dictated by how much motion blur you have in your scene. Um, I often have to use large features because I always shoot at a 50th uh, for all of my movies and uh, that gives you that natural kind of filmic motion blur that everybody likes. Lastly, the channel select allows you to determine whether you want the computer to motion track features in the blue channel only the green channel only, the red channel only, or any combination of those three. For this case, we're just going to leave all three of them on and uh, we're going to start. And if you'll notice that there are no features being picked up on the two actors in the foreground because we masked them out with a poly mask before we started. Um, after that's completed, you're ready to go ahead and solve the camera. And again, you can do all frames or the selected range. And, and down here in the Advanced Solve Refinement section, you can click Optimize Camera Path Smoothness. I tend to leave this off because I find that every once in a while it can smooth out some of the jittery shakiness that you get with a handheld camera. And um, I think in those situations, it actually makes the track less accurate. 
So when you're ready, go ahead and click Start, and it'll solve the entire sequence. Okay, so after, you're, after you've got your predictions, you can click on the 3D button in the upper left-hand corner on the toolbar, and it'll give you an idea of what the scene looks like. And then the next step you're going to want to do is work on the scene geometry. The scene geometry is important because you have to orient your scene in order to be able to accurately work with objects in other 3D programs. If you were just to you know, jump out in 3D space and then use the manual movement to, you know, to, to adjust the scene like this, it'll never be as accurate as it needs to be in order to interact with objects uh, you know, during a visual effects sequence. Okay, so first things first when you're doing the scene geometry is uh, you need to add an origin. This is going to be the 0, 0, 0 coordinates in a lot of your 3D uh, programs like Cinema 4D or Maya or whatever. So you just, all you have to do is click add coordinates from hint and the default type is going to be origin. So all you have to do is select a point inside of your scene where you want that 0, 0, 0 coordinates to be. Um, in some cases, it might be up in the corner or in the back of your scene. So once you've selected your prediction, you can click Connect to Selected, and it'll say that it's connected. And of course, you can click on the Overlays tab and then turn on the Ground Plane if you want to see what your current um, scene geometry looks like. Okay, once you've selected your origin, you're going to need to start defining where the X, Y, and Z coordinates are located inside of this particular video clip. Click Add Coordinates from Hint, and then you can see the default is origin, but you're going to come over here to Type, and then use the drop-down box to select a type of coordinates. I like to use Line Parallel to X, Y, and Z Axis. It allows you to select two points that are in a line, and, um, and tell the computer that that particular direction that those two lines are parallel to a specific axis. Now, you're gonna find two predictions that are in a straight line from each other on the X axis. So what you can do is come in and select a prediction he here, and then you can hold down the command button, or I guess on Windows it would be control, and select another one, and then say, and then click the connect to selected button. Once you've done that, click another Add Coordinates from Hint, and then select the next one. We're going to pick two predictions here that are parallel to the y-axis. Let's find some. And then click Connect to Select It. And then lastly, in this case, you'll do Line Parallel to Z. That's the only one that we don't have. All right, so once you've selected all of your, your predictions, you can click Update Coordinates Frame and see what you got. And then after you update the coordinates in the frame, you'll have something that looks kind of like this. And you can see, of course, it's looking a lot better because uh, that ground plane is now matching uh, the floor. The first thing we can do in order to increase the accuracy of the track is to use manual target tracks. Um, in order to do that, you can click on the Add Target Tracks button in the toolbox. And then, of course, select uh, the object that you would like to track. You're going to want to move the search distance out in order to tell the computer, hey, I need you to look all the way out to this blue line in order to determine where the next frame lands in the accuracy of this particular track. You can click on the TT button over here on tab on the right, which is, stands for target track, and you can either track one frame at a time going forwards and backwards, or you can click the auto track backwards button and it'll just continue tracking. These keyframes will change color based on how accurate the computer thinks that that track is. So as it travels backwards, if it starts to slip, or it gets too close to an area that it, it doesn't know if it's being very accurate, it'll start to turn yellow and then red. See, and down here you can see it's starting to turn orange because it's slipping a little bit. And a lot of times it's easier to use a, a very sharp edge or a, an area of contrast for your manual target track. Uh, that way you can click and add keyframes when necessary. After you've completed doing that, so you're ready to uh, resolve the camera. Now, you do not need to use the camera solve button in the toolbox in order to redo that. The correct way of adjusting a camera solve after you have added uh, things like uh, your, your, your target tracks would be to go up to 3D tasks and then solve adjust. You go ahead and click start. And then you'll see that Buju is calculating the, the differences. And if you noticed, the, the grid on the floor, it shifted just by a few pixels. And that correction, those little minute amounts are what make a big difference 
um, in motion tracking an accurate object. Okay, so let's say you've added a bunch of target tracks and uh, your camera is still shaking a little bit. First, you can add a, add a locator manually. Now, a locator is a way of telling Buju, hey, in every frame that I have, t I show you, this is where that object should be. Click once to add a locator to a specific object in your scene, and then track. And then I usually track back like five frames, and click that same exact object. And as you can see, the second keyframe in that locator now has populated that green crosshair. That green crosshair is your window into where Buju thinks that those pixels are in the frame, and then where the solved camera puts those pixels at. So for example, right now, this green crosshair is pretty accurate. And as you can see, it's starting to slip a little bit here. And that means that Buju thinks that uh, this particular corner, the camera solve is actually placing that slightly to the left. And we don't want that. We want to correct that. And of course, this really isn't that bad. I've, I've tracked some shots where my locator is here and then this green crosshair is like all the way over here. That's a good indicator that uh, the camera solve is not good. Okay, and just like before, after you've gone through and added all of your locators and your target tracks, you can refine the camera solve by clicking on 3D tasks and then solve adjust and then click start. And if you wanted to add a test object, you can click test object and it, it, you'll see that it jumped into the 000, zero, zero coordinates. You can, you can move it around and place it in the area that you want to see it at. And after you've added your test objects, you can go ahead and hit play again and see how the test objects react to the motion track and to the environment. But of course, the one true way to determine is uh, just with your eye. So if something doesn't look right, if you think it looks shaky, continue doing target tracks and locators until you're happy with the scene. After you've done all of your motion tracking and you're happy with the scene, it's time to get the camera out of Buju and into the 3D program of your choice. In this case, I like to use Cinema 4D, so I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Go ahead and click Export Camera in the toolbox, and then it's going to ask you where would you like to save it. This next option down here, export the flag to tracks only, is only if you want some of these predictions to be, you know, in the scene uh, in Cinema 4D. I like to export them all because you never know when you need an extra uh, prediction to place an object. Scaling your scene is important. I like to leave it at 100 because Buju tends to make things very small. And then when you're ready, you can drop down the box and click on Cinema 4D or the program of your choice. And then go ahead and click Save. Okay, so there's one thing you have to do in order to get the camera out of Buju and into Cinema 4D. And what that is, is you got you to change the code a little bit in the C4D file that Buju um, exported. Is all, all you have to do is right-click, do Open With, and then choose uh, Text Edit. Open it with that. I'm going to write this in the description, so if you get lost... In order to get it open in Cinema 4D, all you have to do is click, is click Command-F for Find, and then type in, in the Find window, 3.14159, and hit Enter. And then you'll see... It's going to jump down to a specific keyframe. And what you got to do is just go up to the previous keyframe where it says 0, 0, 0.00000. Copy all of that and get rid of the, the negative and then jump down to that same exact number, 3.15, and paste it right there. Okay, and then after you've done that, go back to the find window and type in parent item. one with six zeros, one, two, three, four, five, six, and one. Okay, and then you can click replace. And what you wanna do is, same thing, parent item, one, one, two, three, four, five, six zeros, and two. And then you click replace all, hit done, and click save. All right, so once you've done that, you can open that up in Cinema 4D. And it's going to ask you, uh, what is the scale of the scene? This, you're, you're going to have to change that based on the scale of the object that you have created or you're going to be inserting into your scene. And there you have it. After you have your camera loaded up into Cinema 4D, you might notice a couple things. Uh, the first one is that in Buju, your track starts in frame 1, while in Cinema 4D, the track starts in frame 0. So in order to compensate for this, what you'll have to do is select all of the keyframes on your camera and just move them up one frame to, to frame 0. And then what it'll do is it'll uh, line up correctly. It's also important to note that your project frames per second matches the frames per second that you've got going in Buju. Otherwise, all your keyframes are going to be jumbled up and spaced out incorrectly. Now, to import your camera into an After Effects project, all you have to do is drag your .ma file directly into your After Effects project. 
you'll end up with something that looks like this where you've got all of your null objects that represents all of the predictions that uh, Buju had made. Copy the camera out of the file that you imported into After Effects and just paste that into your sequence. Now, it's also important to check that uh, all of your keyframes have lined up correctly uh, based on the frame rate. And uh, in this case, it looks like it didn't because, uh, oh, this, this one's actually 23,976, and we exported it at 24. If this happens to you, in order to fix that, it's really easy. All I have to do is select all of the, the keyframes, and then um, hold down the Alt Option button on Mac, and just click it and slide it over just a tad, and it'll line up perfectly with all of the, all of the, uh, the, the frames. And there it is. Once you have a really accurate uh, 3D motion track for your camera, um, it'll really step up your game and uh, make things look a lot, just that much more realistic. Okay, well there you have it. That wraps up today's tutorial on how to 3D motion track a scene with Buju. If you have any requests for tutorials on visual effects, filmmaking, or cinematography, feel free to leave me a comment below and I'll try to get that made. Until next time, thanks for watching.